Hey guys, Rexasaur here and welcome back to World of Tanks where today we'll be reviewing the Tier 9 American Medium Tank, the T-54E1, which is part of the Autoloader line, uh, which, well, the, basically the light tank line which goes into mediums and heavy autoloaders, uh, because, I don't know, the lols, I guess? Um, but yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go through the stats, I'll tell you my opinion, and then we'll get into two replays. So uh, let's start with the stats. 1750. This is a quite a big health pool for tier 9. Um, judging by other tier 9s, if we look at the Conqueror, that has 1950, and that's a heavy tank. And the T30 tank destroyer only has 100 less. So it's quite a big health pool. It's not amazing. It's kind of average. Um, usually 1700 is kind of the average. I know that the uh, IS-8 uh, non-upgraded has 1700 and upgrade 1800 so it's kind of in between kind of on the mid scale when it comes to hit points power to weight ratio it has a power to weight of uh, 14 which isn't very good but it's uh, it <laughs> it's not very good on paper but it is good in real life like IRL not IRL but in game in battle your power to weight ratio doesn't really matter you kind of you, you basically, if you look at the traverse, 46, 36, you turn so fast that your engine speed doesn't really matter considering what kind of tank you are. And the way you have to play this tank, you don't want to be fast, you want to sort of take things slowish. And the slower you get, the, not the well, obviously you don't want to be fucking trundling like a T28, uh, but. You're 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 kind of a, you are a medium tank. You're at medium speed. You're not fast, but you're not slow either. Um, and it's a really nice mix of power to weight. To be honest, if I'm if I'm truly honest, it is very good. Speed limit 43. Yeah, kind of. It goes faster than that, but yeah. Um, armor wise, this has very garbage armor. Um, don't expect to bounce a lot of things. They not one of the most annoying things about this tank. Um, apart from the fact that it's got a really weird smiley face, uh, that you got you got your eye and your smile, but um, is that com it has less turret armor than the T69, which means you can't bounce a lot on your turret, so you can't expect to bounce. The only place you will ever bounce is if someone hits you there during the cone there. If they hit you sort of like that, it will it will just scrape and bounce, and that's about it. Don't expect to bounce anything on this tank. Which is a bit of a shame because the T69 was really nice hold down because of its uh, turret was very 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 well it wasn't very very armored but it was armored enough to bounce things uh, that like tier 8 heavies and stuff and you kind of missed out on it it is angled like but not really you know the armor is so bad that it doesn't really matter um, yeah on the talk of the turret the uh, traverse speed uh, the uh, depression is mediocre at best. Um, you don't get any depression from the sides or the rear and the front. It it's like not very good. It, maximum it goes down to like there. Um, so yeah, it's it's not the best. It could be way way better. The gun is massive, by the way. It is a huge gun. Um, what's left? Uh, view range 400 meters, very average with binocs, which I don't have because I'm a bloody medium tank. Uh, doesn't require. I have put optics on it. Um. Because I don't want to stand still in this thing, but I still want my view range to be better. So optics is definitely a must, in my opinion. And then signal range the radio is really good. There we go. Now the gun. There are two guns on this, if you look at the research. Um, you can... No, uh, do I... I think you need the turret... Yes, you need the tracks before you need you get the top gun, which is a bitch. Uh, the tracks cost 21,000 and then the gun costs a further 43,000. The stock grind of this tank is the worst thing ever. It is it is the most painful experience you will ever have to achieve because you get the same gun as the T69 but at tier 9 you do not want to have 173 pen. On the plus side compared to the T69 you have 5 shells not 4 which is really nice because that means that you do uh, about 1,000... Uh, 1,000... 200, yeah, 1,200 damage uh, per shot, uh, well, per clip, which is reasonable, it's really nice, but it's still not very good. The top gun, however, makes this tank the best 
I've, by far, at the moment, this is my favourite tank to play in. Whenever I'm having a bad game or a few bad days, um, I go either in this, in the T-51 or the T-30, because this tank is so good, <laughs> and this gun is so overpowered. It only has four shells, and it has a 2.22 second between shells, which is quite annoying, because uh, it's not two seconds, but it's still much faster than the French autoloaders. Complete time of loading is 36 with 100% crew, and I've got vents as well. It's much better than that. It's like 33, I think, uh, which is really nice. 210 pen, which is enough. It's not as good as, say, uh, the BL... Uh, the BL9 on the IS3 or the French auto uh, the French autoloaders who have more than that, but 210 in a medium tank is definitely enough, and then 390 average is just godly. It's four shells at 390, average out to uh, 1,550. No, less than more than that. 100, 1,510. That's a lot of damage. That's enough to clip a IS3. You can clip an IS-3. You can clip a lot of things in this tank. It is so, so powerful. It's unbelievable. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Um, accuracy is not amazing, but not bad either. Aiming time is a bit crap. Considering you aim uh, slower than you reload, that's always a bitch. But the gun is amazing, and you can't really fault it in any way. Uh, because it is just incredible. <laughs> Uh, to the point where you won't actually need... I've only got one clip of APCR because you rarely ever need to use it. Only if you're ever in a very high tier 10 game uh, will you ever need to use because 255 pen... Excuse me, 255 pen is definitely enough to get through most armor. But 210, very, very nice amount of stuff. And this tank is the ultimate medium tank in my opinion. And I've... I've mastered the way of the medium tank because of the T69 and now this. I've perfected the way I play medium tanks thanks to this tank because it just tells you exactly how to play. And um, I I love playing autoloaders now just because this tank is so, so, so devastating. If you make a mistake in this tank, you are so screwed because, you know, no armor. If you don't make a mistake in this tank, you will get the best games out there. And I'm about to show you two of my very, very best games. And, um, what the fuck? Something just attacked my window. And yeah, so we well, shall see you now in the first of two amazing replays. Okay, guys, so here we are on the first replay. Um, it's a tier 9, 8 game. Mostly tier 8, there's a lot of tier 8s. And, uh, five tier 9s on our team, four on the other. But one of those is tier 9 RT, while they have two tier 7 RT, which can be a pain. Um, so as you can see, just on the start, you're not f you're not slow. You're not fast either, but you are keeping up with uh, T71. This tank is also quite big. Um, I think that's one of the big disadvantages, no pun intended, about this tank. Um, is that it's very sizable. But <laughs> this bit just makes me laugh every time I think about it. So this T71 goes up. There's a WZ131. It's not even, you know, not even any of it. It's just going to go, ah. But look at this 5100, right? I've just loaded all my shells. This guy is still reloading. And I'm just going to put one shot in. Put a second shot in. Put a third shot in. And... Oh, I bounced. Sad face. Before I killed him. Oh, well. But as you can see, I took one shot. That was from the E75 or something. Oh, it wasn't an E75. Well, something hit me, and then our uh, M12 hit me as well. And my gun has been damaged as well, so I'm going to have to fix that at some point, which I choose to do now. This Tiger 2 is doing an amazing job of ramming the side of the mountain. But in that time, I put three shells. I did... The guy was on 14, and he ended up on 300, so... About 1,100 damage. 1,100 in, like, six seconds? That's horrendous. That is horrendously huge amount of damage. And that is literally what this tank is all about. Doing a horrendous amount of damage really quickly. Now I've only got two shells left so I might go for the reload or I might not. I'm not entirely sure. I usually do because the reload is really nice on this tank. Um, it's only 33 seconds uh, with 
vents, as I've already said. So it's it's really nice. But there's a 30 here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim towards him. Now there is a Yarg Tiger there. And for some reason he didn't show. But, okay, my replay's a bit buggered. I'm not, I'm not sure. But there was a Yarg Tiger 88 there, which is what I was shooting at. Um, but I'm going to reload now. And I'm just going to stand here. Hope I don't get hit by RT. Put myself inside these rocks. Inside the rocks? Yes, I put myself inside the rocks. Now, a spot. I, I, I'm spotted. But I do also spot the Waffle Tractor Panzer IV, a T343, and a Indian Panzer. I have fully reloaded now. So I'm just going to clip as anything I can potentially clip. There's an Indian Panzer. This Indian Panzer is one of the luckiest guys alive, by the way. It's because I'm, he manages to bounce so many of my shells later on. But I do manage to put two shots into him. And uh, the damage just keeps racking up. Because this is like having... This is basically the equipment having a, ver a weaker version of the BL-9 on the um, IS-3. But as an autoloader. So it's like an autoloading BL-9. Now I click to reload right now because I couldn't kill the um, Yag uh, Yag Tiger 8 here. So I'm going to reload. Get myself a full clip. It's, it's always better to have a full clip in this tank than to have two or three shells. Even three shells. Well, three shells is a bit more limited, but you, you definitely don't want one, and two is on the verge of limiting because you do about, or you do less, you do 780 damage average with two, which is a lot of damage, but it could be more, you know, it could be a whole 1400, but, you know. So, so there's the Indian Panzer. Shoot him, and. Luck has on his side. I thought I'd kill him at that point. He bounces twice with his turret, and it's ridiculous. So I've taken another hit. I'm now on, well, within two shot range for most things now. Uh, within one shot range of a high roll. Well, not even a high roll. But within one shot range of the uh, Waffle Tractor and Panzer IV. And I'm just going to camp by this rock and reload again. It's a lot of. One of the big disadvantages of autoloaders, and you hear that a lot, is the reload. And that's mostly due to the fact that they can't do shit <laughs> when they're reloading. And there's the T-34-3. He is not going to be very happy. One shot. He's been tracked. He's now about to take a lot of damage. And goodbye. That guy got killed in about 8 seconds. <laughs> Just to tell you the excessive, oh, just so much damage. Tree falls to my left, there's a Tiger 2 there, he was spotted earlier. Um, and the enemy have sort of been surrounded to the bottom quarter, or to the top left quarter of the map now. Um, and the Tiger 2 is doing some kind of YOLO run. I'm going to enter a reload, I've still got another like 5 seconds left on my reload. Uh, but this Tiger 2 is probably going to get killed without me um, needing to do anything. So I'm going to wait by the bush in front to try and spot all these guys without getting absolutely destroyed. There's a Waffle Tractor. Don't know where I can see him. There's a Yag Tiger. There we go. Put a shot into his lower plate. Put a second shot into his lower plate. I have been spotted. There's a Tortoise. That could be bad. Puts a shot into me. I'm going to put a shot into his Capola. I miss. Shoots me again. Another shot into his cupola. Which I miss again. And I am now dangerously low health. To be fair, I probably should have backed off as soon as I saw him. Um, the accuracy of this gun obviously isn't incredible. I did already say that. And the tortoise doesn't have a lot of weak points. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and go down there and totally fail. But he manages to die. All that's left is a tortoise and a borsig. Borsig is spotted, tortoise is also spotted. I've been spotted somehow. Not entirely sure how. The camouflage mechanics are a bit broken uh, now. As you can see, I put when I, when I try and spot something that I can't actually see, I, I move my cursor up and down. There you go, kill the borsig. I, put, I don't know why I do that. It kind of works though, which is really nice. There's the crusader. Miss him gets killed. I've only got two shells left. I'm not going to go for the reload though. I better not go for the reload because that would be stupid. Um, 
because I assume someone else is going to shoot the tortoise before I get there. I do 780 damage. Um, so, should be fine. But T69 is getting behind the tortoise. I'm going to try and get up, and the tortoise backs himself up in a wall. Put a shot into him, which misses, so it doesn't actually go into him. Put another shot, tracks him. Has to go to a reload. So, yeah, it's a bit of a pain. And he's going to fall, I think. I think the tortoise gets tracted. He gets rammed. I don't know if I even get any more shot into him. I break track. my track. I don't think I get the kill. This guy's on 60 health. Yeah. Oh yeah, elevation isn't good as I told you as well. Uh, depression is crap, but so is elevation. But uh, that was a very good game, and I will show you why in the results screen. So here's the results screen, guys. Over a hundred thousand credits, high caliber, and 3,400 XP. It was a double, but. Um, it's still, and it's only a second class, which is the worst part of it. Considering I did 5,200 damage, which is a hell, hell of a lot of damage to do uh, with 1,150. And look at that little AMX 5100 on the enemy team. He did awful. Um, but yeah, I fired 26 shots, only 20 hit, and 17 penned. But I, um, you know, there we go, and <laughs> pretty much that's the replay, and that's how it works. So let's see uh, the second replay. Okay guys, this is the second replay, and um, this is now my favourite medium map, or at least standard mode on this map, and when I'm down south. So, this, the, the where I'm spawned right now in this game mode on this map is my favourite medium place to be as a medium tank. So that's already quite low chances of that happening. But for some reason I've mastered this, this map. I've I've mastered it, and that you know every time I'm in a medium tank and I've have this kind of setup, I always have amazing games. So anyway, uh, first things first, we are going to go down to the little village. We've loaded our clip. There is a Indian Panzer up there, and here is a I three. I missed the first shell, missed the second shell, which is ridiculous. But there is a T-54E1, and I hit him once. If I had hit all my shells that I shot, that could have been a deadly, deadly amount of damage done. Sadly, it was not to be. There's also a 113 there. I do apologize about the um, uh, names not showing up, or at least the names of the tanks not showing up. Um, I don't know why it does this, but every time it's my second replay. I say this every week. Um, it doesn't do that. So there's the ice tree. I'm going to pop up <coughs> and spot him. I'm going to wait for my radio to actually do anything. The T-54E1 is still there. I'm going to put a side shot into him, but not because bloody hell. Then I'm going to ricochet again. And that's one of the problems about the accuracy of this gun, as well as RNG is, is the big version. That was a low roll, holy crap. Oh, and there's a T-54E1. He was spotted. I set him alight with that shell. And now I'm going to reload. At my T-71 support, it has died. There is very dangerous RT shooting at me. I am being shot at, so I'm assuming, well, that means I'm not hidden very well. The 113 gets absolutely raped by the uh, ISU, which is very nice. There's an Indian Panzer still up there. I'm going to pop up, see if I can spot people. I want to spot that IS-3 and the uh, T-54E1 as well. Put a shot into him. He's been tracked. Next shell misses. And then that shell does a high roll. But gotcha. wasted a clip to kill an IS-3 basically there. I did only take one shot. And I've only taken one shot the whole battle. And uh, I've already done probably over 2,000 damage. Uh, yeah, I must have. So now there's only the T-54 one there he is. I'm still reloading. He doesn't know that though. He probably assumes it though. Indian Panzer's actually gone downhill now. You get sh shot by several of the tanks. The ISU is still up there. <coughs> and that's what he's focusing on. And there we go. There's the there's the turret of the T-54E1 for you. It's not very good. <laughs> you get shot. And I've still got three shells. I'm not going to reload for that. I'm just going to wait for him to pop out again. 
There he is. Don't know what he was doing there, but I kill him. Two shells left. Indian Panzer's on 800, so I'm going to reload. Don't have enough to clip him. 33 seconds, that's my reload. Yeah, see, it says there, it says there. Right, the rest of the team is doing pretty pretty average. Um, it's a tier 10 game, so there's still some pretty dangerous tanks on the enemy team. Uh, there's a Centurion 1 up there, I don't know what he's doing. There's also a 5100 to my left. Now, the Borsig kills a T-34 who, for some reason, suicided himself towards the Indian Panzer. And the Indian Panzer is going to move, but I'm going to Enemy is shoot hit. him through two guns, which is a shot you shouldn't expect to do any time. Now I reload again. I've been doing a lot of two shell reloads because a lot of the tanks I'm up against are on quite full health, and I'd rather be able to kill them than not. Still haven't uh, really done well. I <laughs> haven't broken through. I've if you look at the amount of dead enemy tanks on this side, there's a lot of them. Um, it's pretty, pretty strange. There's the Centurion up there. He's going to spot me. I'm not going to be in a very good position to do anything against that. He bounces. I managed to track him and he gets absolutely decimated. I've got three shells left. I'm going to go for a reload again. Because I know that the 5100 is on full health. And I can clip. A 5100 if I've got four shells. The rest of our team doing excessive well, not excessively well, but they're doing well. They're they're pushing through the north. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just a waiting game at the moment. And this is one of the issues with this tank. Is that it's very stop-start. You do have you can like in this point I'm reloading and getting into position, but a lot of it is stop-start. Put a shell into him. Throw another shot to him. He gets killed because he got shot by the uh, ISU. I am not going to be able to pen that Yark Tiger from where I am. I took a big, big hit from him. 626 is a lot of damage to lose. Um, if he gets a high roll again, I could either get one shotted or, you know, decimated. So, right now there's only five enemy tanks left. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to circumnavigate the hill and uh, go up through the center of it try not to get spotted on the way and not get shot and killed that would be awesome and that's pretty much my tactic for this map now um, it is one of the best medium tactics especially in an autoloader is just like the, just so so much damage can to be done for enemy tanks trying to go across there's an E75 I'm going to put one shot into him and a second shot into him and I'm not going to get a third shot in. So I'm going to go for a reload. That's probably. Yeah, he's on 100% health. Yeah, go for a reload. Well, that guy got absolutely decimated. We do have a Fox 155, I just realized, so. That's probably why he got decimated. But I'm going to move up this area. We've, we've totally got this in the bag now. I'm on four kills. This tank is just so, so good. When it gets into these medium positions and starts just unloading every shell and not getting any shots taken back at it, it's not the kind of tank to uh, trade shots because it doesn't have to. If you get shot once by, say, an IS-8, it does 440 average, you unload all your shells into it, and then you back away, and it then it's reloaded. That's the kind of it's not a trade, but it's not a shot for shot tank. Um, if it was a shot for shot tank, it would be rubbish. First shot into him, for a second shot into him, and he gets killed by the object 140. So, there we go, that is the T 54 E1. I will show you the results of the battle, and then we'll come up with a uh, suitable conclusion for it. So here's the results. That was my mastery, not my uh, second class, thank God. And it was another high caliber, and you'll see why. But once again, a whole lot of credits and a whole lot of XP when you shoot that much. When you get, Usually you'll get high caliber in this tank, just because of the amount of damage you do. And this is the amount of damage I did. 
5,900. That's almost 6,000 damage done. It is incredible. And I still had like 17 shells left at the end, not including my premium shells. That is a lot of damage. Able to do really, really quickly. And uh, inclu <laughs> including that, 3,300 spotting damage. So, eh. So anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this replay. And yes, I would definitely recommend the T5041. The grind is long. The stock grind is a pain. But the tank is just one of the best things ever. And if you love medium tanks, yes, the T5041 is so, so good and just for you. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you next time.